like to think of ourselves as being pretty evolved. Society as we like to see it is all about overcoming our primal and bestial nature, about following rules and establishing norms of respect and reciprocity and the aim of lofty goals such as overcoming violence and conflict. But there's one place where that all apparently breaks down, or at least it appears to. It's that phenomenon that is so ubiquitous at rock and metal shows. That mass of furious fists and mashing bodies the mosh pit. It seems animal, and it's definitely primal to say the least, but that doesn't mean that it's not without its own order. There are rules governing the pit, spanning from physics to anthropology to socio-psychology. So today, we're going to be looking at those rules. We're going to investigate the science of the mosh pit. They say some of the best science is done hands-on, so uh, this is gonna be fun. It's usually a pretty big surprise when I tell people this because, you know, look at how I dress, for instance, but I'm actually a pretty big metalhead. I like to tell people that my first concert was Disturbed, but that's actually a lie. It was really the Backstreet Boys when I was about seven. But the first concert I went to as like a tween or teen was Disturbed. I don't remember everyone who was there, but I do remember that I had Killswitch engaged there as well, and it was just awesome. It was a truly formative experience. I've been going to rock and metal concerts as often as I can ever since. And whenever I'm at the ground level, you can bet that I'll be surfing, headbanging, and yes, moshing. So the last time I was at a Five Finger Death Punch concert, I, uh, I got a concussion, which makes doing what I'm about to do really freaking stupid. But you know, I'd like to think that I know my limits a little bit better at 24 than I did at 20. So you know, maybe, uh, maybe this will turn out all right. That's not an exaggeration, I actually did get a concussion when I was in a five-figure death punch pit. But that's because there is a lot of force being exerted by the bodies within the pit. People get pushed, shoved, and hurled in all sorts of directions, and they're bouncing off people constantly in the process. If you try to follow a single person, it looks incredibly random. There's no clear rhyme or reason to where people bounce specifically. But it was when physicist Jesse Silverberg was outside looking in that he realized something. It was random, yes but a familiar kind of random. We may remember from Intro to Physics or Chemistry that gas particles tend to bounce off each other, whereas liquids and solids respectively have more cohesion and structure. And if you look at this interactive model that they developed called mashers, that is, mobile active simulated humanoids, it looks rather similar. And this is based off of video and hands-on knowledge of mosh pits. It's honestly pretty fun to play with, you know, with all the levers and buttons and whatnot, so there's a link for it down in the doobly-doo if you want to check it out as well. Pretty good model of how things go around. People are kind of bumping it haphazardly into each other. Uh, you know, the masses are about equal, so it's just kind of random and chaotic motion. And I mean, you got a little guy like me in there, so I'm just bounding all over the freaking place, you know? <laughs> but even if how people move in the pit is best described by chaotic processes, how people act definitely isn't. There are rules of etiquette in the pit. You don't wear spiky clothing. You don't actually try to fight anybody. There's no intentional hitting below the belt, and if somebody falls down, they're going to get lifted up. There are, of course, rule breakers and norm violators, but people either tend to ignore them or eject them from the pit if they can. Deviation is a normal part of any culture, no matter how well regulated the members of that culture would like it to be. Mosh pits are a culture all their own, which is why several anthropologists have found it worthwhile to actually look at them closer and study them. Some experts argue that mosh pits act as an opportunity for participants, I mean, largely men, to be able to explore different modes of masculinity. That is, it gives them an opportunity to temporarily abandon what it means to be masculine according to the more modern and banal definitions of the term, and explore what it means to be masculine in a space that is predominantly constituted by countercultural elements. For the women in the pit, researchers argue that it gives them an opportunity to be able to explore modes of physical action that are normally precluded to them by societal norms. Although there's been a lot of progress over the last few decades, women are often subtly penalized for taking on more aggressive characteristics. So, the pit arguably offers them an opportunity to be able to subvert these traditional gender norms and explore other means of, you know, being a person. To be clear, that's doing a bit of a disservice to these really intricate and interesting theses, but they are honestly behind a paywall that I even can't scale, so that's honestly as best a description as I'm able to give just by gleaning the secondary sources pertaining to that information as well as the abstracts and whatnot. 
To be clear, it's not that women are entering a mosh pit thinking, I just can't wait to subvert traditional gender norms. And similarly, it's not that men are lining up for a pit thinking, you know, I can't wait to be able to release this pent up aggression that's just been building from the banalities of a postmodern existence, and I can't wait to be able to experience this catharsis in a place that is relatively safe to express aggression. People mosh because it's a rush, because it's fun. If you press some people, they might be able to identify rebellion as some form of motive, but more realistically, most people just do so without any real forethought. And this is coming from the guy who's like making a profession out of overthinking things. What these larger sociological theories do, both here and in general, is try to tease out the structural reasons for why it's a rush. From what norm must we depart? What status quo must be perturbed? What needs must either be met or neglected by society for this unique sense of enjoyment to even be a thing? Ultimately, what these deeper theories show is that the mosh pit is a place that is predicated on violence, but also on trust, and a lot of it. If that deep amount of trust didn't exist there, then people wouldn't feel safe enough to be able to express themselves in such a physical way. But where does this trust come from? Why do people hold fast to rules of mutual aid and respect in an environment literally defined by violence? And what makes us want to do it in the first place? First off, as to why we do it, part of it may have to do with the music itself. Research into the physiological effects of heavy metal shows that it tends to induce violent affect in its listeners. At least to a point. It also has been shown to be linked to positive emotions and feelings of a deep peace in those who are routine listeners or those with certain attitudinal or emotional predispositions. And that positivity may act as a partial feedback mechanism, a sort of way to be able to instill or inculcate that surprising amount of gregariousness that you see in a mosh pit. There's also been research to show that it eases physical activity, especially those sorts of activities that involve endurance or pain tolerance. So it could be that listening to this sort of music allows people to temporarily ignore the central governor and push through the pain longer. Second, people are really good at generating group attitudes and identities. As in, really good at it. So good that we'll do so for superficial or totally species reasons, such as eye color, or even by being randomly assigned to a group despite knowing that it was a random assignment. Many people will tell you about the sense of community that tends to be found at rock and heavy metal concerts, so it wouldn't at all be surprising that people are forming group identities based upon their shared enjoyment of this kind of music. And a plethora of research shows that people are kinder and more generous to members of their perceived in-group. So even if the pit is a more violent and frenetic place, that in-group psychology means that it's going to encourage it to not be about hurting other people but to instead be about lifting each other up. As to where the trust comes from to be able to pull off this whole thing, we can probably give a whole heaping bunch of credit to none other than oxytocin. Oxytocin is known as the love slash bonding hormone in the brain. It gets released in certain activities to enhance the experience of certain bonds, such as breastfeeding, having sex, or just acting in a group in general. It facilitates generosity and can help strengthen the bonds of trust between participants. It has also been found in team sports, and researchers looking into that context have argued that it acts as a means of regulating emotion and developing bonds of trust. And since team sports tend to be characterized by physical activity and its members are all oriented towards the same core goal, it's not too big of an inferential leap between that and the mosh pit. Far from being a bestial, antisocial place, Mosh pits turn out to be places informed by society writ large, places with their own norms and culture, driven by none other than our eminently social brains. Finish watching a trailer and getting out of one of their mosh pits. Best field work ever. I'm curious to see what you guys think about this, about the psychology, physics, and sociology of the mosh pit. Do you think there are any other mechanisms that I might have missed out that kind of leads to this unique blend of pro-sociality and violence? I mean, I'd be really curious to see what you guys' thoughts about this are, about any other thoughts that cropped up while watching the video, or any suggestions for future topics. I'm more than open to them down in the comments section. I look forward to reading all of them and answering a few of them in the next office hour. Sources for everything is always down in the doobly-doo, as well as links to the Facebook, Twitter, and the blog. I look forward to seeing you guys out there as well. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by commenting down below, by sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel stay in the loop for more awesome social science content is uploaded. If you want to be guaranteed to be in the loop to make sure that you are in the know when more videos are uploaded, be sure to click the bell icon as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I want to give a quick shout out and thank you to Stephanie, my fiance. She's been helping me get the footage to be able to do this video. So just her support for this, as well as uh, for, for the channel and for everything that I do, is just awesome. Thank you so much. Words, words can't describe how grateful I feel. I love you.